Hey folks, walk with me. I came across a video the other day and it was, it was slightly different than the subject of this video, but I'll kind of tell you how I got there. So this video was about, was the, the title is something to the effect of why are the products that are advertised on popular podcasts why are they usually so crappy? <laughs> and that kind of made me giggle because I feel like I've fallen for one or two of them in the past and kind of had that experience of being like, what is this piece of junk? And they go through like a whole like spiel there about, you know, why that is. And I think that their case was pretty compelling as to how that sort of <laughs> comes about. But the one thing that stood out to me that sort of led me out on a little bit of a side path from the purpose of that video was, now they had mentioned, I think, if I'm, if I'm remembering it correctly, they had said that there was like a study or something or there was information out there that 70% of people who listen to, I guess, sort of like the most popular or the most like cult of personality podcasts, 70% of the people that listen to those consider the podcast host to be a friend. Now, I tried to look up some other stats and the basic gist was like, this is really hard to like parse out. Um, so I saw things like from 50% onward, but sort of seemed to be that the, uh, the bulk of what was out there was like at least 50% of people consider the podcasts that they really enjoy listening to, that they, that they consider that host to be a friend of theirs. And, you know, it got me thinking about like how we've talked about isolation and the dangers of being isolated here on this playlist before, but there's also something about the information age, if you will, which we're obviously still very much steeped in. Um, many people would say that we're sort of getting to a post-truth era, but without delving into that, it is interesting that you can sort of be consuming knowledge that you just wouldn't have had access to, certainly not access to as easily, right, in any other sort of period of time. Um, but that, that sort of prioritization of that cuts us off from the real existing in-person world. It's part of the reason for doing these videos outside while walking. It's not just because I don't want to put a lot of effort into editing <laughs> and production. It's, um, it's also that sort of thing that I think, I think is a saying out there. I feel like I've come across it a few times with content creators much younger than I am, but I think they, they're like, talk about somebody who's just sort of like going off and is all consumed about something that doesn't really matter online. And their statement is like, go touch grass, right? Which I think, <laughs> unless I'm misunderstanding it, basically means like, this is the internet. This isn't, real life, real life, uh, go outside, like, and, and connect with nature. That's the real stuff. Um, and if that's not what it means, that's what I'm going to talk about <laughs> here. Um, but yeah, it's, I could see a world in which, you know, the priorities being such that I need to stay on top of the podcast that I enjoy because it's giving me information that I need and, um, you know, all this stuff that's, again, just sort of like hyper-tuned to the information age. But um, as I think my old buddy Wayne Dyer would have said, you know, there's information and there's inspiration. And the information age is sort of the opposite of the inspiration age. Um, you know, being out with your own thoughts, being out and, and observing how nature takes place and that you are a part of this thing. So your observations about how nature exists and what it does, and that is reflective of you as well, 
whether you sit behind a keyboard all day or not, you still come from this, you will still return to this, and, um, and that there's a lot of value in not losing sight of that. So people being so bought into must prioritize information and that then causing them to have constantly like AirPods in, earbuds in, whatever, and um, being then further disconnected from any in-person interaction, right? And then with the ramp up of fully remote work or even partially remote work um, and people sort of getting used to or having gotten used to being isolated during the pandemic and feeling like they're still sort of stuck in that in some ways. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty challenging and I can see the kind of grasping at straws for like, Joe Rogan is my friend. Or like, even if you don't think that they're your friend, to feel that you have this sort of like knowledge of them, right? That to some degree, you know them. There is something there that's very close to a feeling of intimacy, like a friendship would be, right? There's some something that you're getting from this idea of, I understand that person, I feel close to them. Um, and so even if you wouldn't put the moniker of friend on it, if you have that sense of, oh, I know Theo Vaughn, right? Or whatever it is, um, then, you know, you might sort of be in the same trap, <laughs> isolation mindset wise, as somebody who just flat out is like, oh, I consider them a friend. So consuming that information, being an isolating sort of activity in and of itself, and then confusing these people that you sort of spend a lot of time with, right? In a way, in a very one-sided way, you spend a lot of time with them and buying into this idea that there is then some level of meaningful closeness right? The, if you don't want to say intimacy because you're weird about that word because you think you have to be an alpha male or something. <laughs> well, you probably didn't watch this video if that was the case. But, um, but yeah, some level of actual, true, meaningful closeness um, is very different than consuming media and podcasts. And even if they are sort of personal topics to get covered. I cover a lot of personal topics here, right? But um, there's a lot of ways in which friendship takes place. One of those probably fundamental, most important ways is it's a two-way thing, right? It's not this just sort of one person is doing all the talking or one person in their guest is doing all the talking, all the presenting. They're dictating where the conversation goes and what's being said. And then the other person is just hearing it, right? There is no engaging there. Not in, the con not in the way of you say something and then I have to respond to that and then you have to deal with my response. <laughs> um, I know I say that maybe in a, in a weirdly like confrontational seeming way, but that's not how I mean it. But there is n completely lost elements of that um, if you're just doing this in the podcast sense. And so I would just say, if you feel that you get very sucked down this road and that that could be sort of problematic for you in the sense of, you know, maybe you tend to isolate as it is. Maybe you tend to be lacking in friendships as it is. You know, I'm speaking to the choir here. Like this is, I'm describing myself. Um, and that you then knowingly or not, has sort of replaced those, the potential for those real life things with, you know, podcast hosts or TV hosts or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be podcast hosts. Um, you know, maybe consider the impact that that's having that is a further drain and is just keeping you further separated from the world and those dangers of what isolation does to a person and to then a family unit and then to a society. All right, folks, we got about 10 minutes in today 
And as always, I appreciate you watching whether you walked with me or not. And I will see you in the next video.